We're gonna talk about the top ten things we read. Top ten things we read. If books you had, yeah. and comics. We've read so much. <laughs> This video is humorous because no one reads except for Alicia. Except for so we're gonna leave some of these, we're gonna give her the, the con for some of these as they say in Star Trek. So we're gonna give you guys five books and then five comic books. Oh, we're gonna start with books? Yeah. Cool. So number five for books was uh, was a uh, binge by Tyler Oakley. This is Tyler Oakley's uh, memoir. Some of you have probably heard of Tyler Oakley. He nope. is no, you haven't. He's a, oh, he's a YouTube really? guy. I don't read books. Well, no, uh, but he's, he's, he's a YouTube. He's a YouTube. Guy. Did he write a book? Yes. yes. Okay, then I haven't heard of it. <laughs> his book is kind of like part one of um, his life story thing that he's kind of putting out. He also has a documentary coming out. Um, he's really not afraid to like talk about himself or what he's been through and stuff like that. And a lot of it's really funny, but a lot of it is also really heartbreaking too. Like he talks about being in an abusive relationship and um, just his relationship with his father and like, you know, his, uh, you know, the him being gay and everything like that. So it's really, it's really interesting and it's it's funny, but it's also heartfelt. And I wouldn't expect anything else from Tyler Oakley. Oh. Number four. Number four. Number four. Still doing this. Um, places. All the Bright Places by Jennifer Neven. It's basically about two teenagers who find each other and um, one, uh, the girl Violet, um, has lost her sister and so she's been in this like huge depressive state and then the other one, Finch, uh, is bipolar and um, they kind of meet together and work through all their issues. It's not a book about mental illness where each of them saves the other one. Um, I'm, I don't want to give anything away, but it's it's a lot more complicated than that. Um, but it's an interesting look at, at mental illness. Like if you really like Fault in Our Stars, then you'll like this one. Okay. That's it's sadder than <laughs> Fault in Our Stars, that guys! Is sadder or more sad? Um, I think it's more, more sad. sad. Yeah, it's I think so. Sad. Oh well. Apologies for it's bad colloqu anguish. Colloquially. Colloquial Colloquialism. Alright, at least right. leave. Bye. Hey, <laughs> so now we have one that both of you get to talk about without me. Although I actually yeah. know who wrote this one, yeah. so that's cool. Yeah, everybody um, should know who wrote this one. I'm not completely out of it. You're never weird on the internet. Almost. 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 By Felicia Day. Yes, great. She's like the nerd queen. Although she doesn't like being called that after reading this book. Yeah. Um, uh, As you can tell by the. Yep, she's that was Felicia Day's. She can control the weather. The wind is bad now. The wind. Yeah. wind is on her side. She's got, you know. by the way. <laughs> Again, this is one of those memoirs by these people who kind of seem like really like happy all the time like that, but it has a lot of these darker stuff, like especially um, her dealings with Gamergate and the backlash right. she kind of had with that. I mean, like a lot of these people, if any of them, you don't really see like that part of it, and you see them doing YouTube videos or whatever, being like, wee, I'm so happy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like and us. Yeah. We have terrible we lives. We have problems. <laughs> yes. It's why we do this. We actually do yeah. have problems. But... Yes, we do. Who doesn't? I don't have problems. All of them. You don't have any problems. Doesn't have I problems. no problems. Well, aren't you special? <laughs> Number two. Number two is where is The it? Accident oh. Season. The Accident Season. Oh my gosh, I love this book. Okay, so The Accident Season by Moira Fowley Doyle is a... What a name. I know, I know. right? That's, She's that's, super it's Irish. It's a novelist person. But it's another young adult novel, and it's kind of realistic and kind of supernatural at the same time. It's kind of magical realism, but also you're like, is it just magical or is it... I don't know. The, these siblings, um, whenever uh, October rolls around, um, they call it the accident season because then everybody in their family suffers like terrible accidents. Um, and it could be just like, you know, knocking their head or something like that or breaking their arm or people have died before. Also there's weird stuff going on with a girl at their school who's gone missing but nobody like seems to know who she is. Like it also, you know, it's, it's kind of this weird supernatural mystery thing. Um, it kind of sounds like Final Destination ish, but like on a, sure. on a lower level, on a lesser plane, the yeah. Lakers can find a lot of October and like not necessarily. It sounds like night. it would yeah. make a decent adaption onto the screen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it would. Yeah. 
Number one. Number one. Number one is uh, called Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. And, um, what a name! So, I know! Uh, I goodness. I'm pretty like, sure that one... Name. I don't know if that's a pen name or not. Rainbow Rowell. Yeah. That's fun. Rainbow Rowell has been around for a few years. Um, she's written books like Eleanor and Park, um, Fangirl, and this is actually a continuation, sort of, of her book Fangirl. Mm. Her book Fangirl is about a girl who writes fan fiction, and then Carry On is this, is the fan fiction. Oh. Of the character. Oh, okay. Cool. It's a Harry Potter-ish type world um, where there's magic and stuff like that, but she obviously makes it her own. Um, she has her own set of rules as to you know how the magic works and everything like that. And she has her own uh, chosen one and everything like that. But this is kind of different. It's a lot more like if Harry and and Malfoy hooked up. Oh. <laughs> it's basically Which, very. Fan I'm fiction. sure there's plenty of fan fiction for that. Oh, there is. Yeah. So yeah. it's like it's high end Harry Potter fan fiction. Yes, sort of. <laughs> it is interesting because she does take the chosen one trope and kind of like turns it on its head. It's not anything like Harry Potter um, in that sense of it. You know, there are characters that feel like. Um, parodies of characters that you've yeah. seen in Harry Potter, but it's more of a of a uh, reinterpretation of different archetypes and, and character tropes and stuff like that. So overall, 2015, a good year for books? It was awesome. Yeah, good. I liked it. Seems it's like a lot great. of people writing about their problems right. and how they got through with it. Yep. Makes the books there's relatable. A lot of, makes there's the a lot of problems relatable. out there. <laughs> so do I. Yep. <laughs> I'm gonna move on to comic books now. Comic books! <laughs> this one is not just gonna be me just talking for. Well, we have. I've read some of these. Yeah, no, I can talk now. So, I, I'm noticing two big themes with our uh, comic book list. One, strong female characters. Girls! Yes. Girls! Girls! Who runs world? Girls! <laughs> um, Number two, uh, Marvel. Very Marvel heavy. Very Marvel yes. heavy. I think Marvel was better than DC. Uh oh, look out. There's the fanboys. Yeah. Uh oh, Marvel's going after us. Yeah, sorry guys. Yeah. Number five, Number five. Spider Gwen. Yay. Spider Gwen. Which was written by Jason Latour, and the artwork was Robbie Rodriguez. They did a very good job bringing a character. Um, that was introduced into the um, Spider-Verse Spider series mm -hmm. um, and became very popular, partly because of who it was and her relation yeah. to Spider-Man, yeah. and then also the costume was really, really cool. Yeah. Because uh, okay, so, well, we get to go back to a young Gwen yeah. who the tables are flipped. Instead of right. Peter losing Gwen, Gwen loses, loses Peter, Peter, and it's because of her powers and then she becomes a superhero instead. Yeah. And she meets Peter Parker during the Spider-Verse series, and they're like, yo, you Was died, it? and I couldn't save you. And then she's like, yo, you died, and I couldn't save you. And then they're like, let's, let's get each other's back. No, <laughs> no, no, stop with the fan fiction. No. But anyways, then they kind of say- That's how those things normally kind of yeah, go, Yeah, it is kind of how it's true. It'll be very interesting to see how those two characters now yeah. play out Interact. over time for right. Peter Parker. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I was thinking they were going to do, is she was going to become a love interest for yeah. Miles Morales. They could do that. I can oh, get on board with. that's true. I kind of wouldn't mind seeing him get back together with Katie, but... Yeah. What? Number four. Number four. Now, I read these. Some of these. You guys haven't read them, but the new uh, Marvel Star Wars comics. Ever yeah. since Marvel, or ever since Disney owned Star Wars, Marvel has been writing new Star Wars comics that are set in between... Um, Episodes three and four, and also set between episodes six and seven. seven. Yeah. Um, and right now are the only expanded universe content that is considered canon. The, the the person writing these is Jason Aaron. Something about comic book writers and being named Jason, I guess. Mm. They're just good. <laughs> um, and then Stuart uh, Immonen, I guess you'd pronounce his last name. Where is it? I M M O N E N. Immonen. Stuart Immonen. No. It's very reminiscent of the old uh, Star Wars movie posters. Yeah. And then the writing is very focused on telling the character stories as opposed to telling these big universe stories, which is kind of the the big uh, 
the, the nice thing about the episodes four, five, and six. I love Captain Marvel. Uh, I haven't read these. I just know that we're going to get a movie soon-ish. Yes. Well, and Sometime. maybe an <laughs> introduction think. to the character in the movie soon. So that's all I know I about so. the character. I hope so. yeah. She's probably one of the strongest <laughs> females she's like, in is the like comics one, right now. She's one of the most powerful no, no. like people yeah. in the yeah. comics right now. Uh -huh. She's also got a sick hairstyle. She does. Yes. And, I think in general we need more female writers um, for comic books. So the fact that we get this really awesome female character being written by a female writer, it's just really helpful and good. And you know, it's it doesn't waste a lot of time being like, wow, she's a girl and she's doing all this stuff. It just she does the stuff. Yeah. This comic has a female writer, which is really cool. And there's another one on our list that has a female writer as well. There is. And that's actually the next one that we're going to be talking about, which is Miss Marvel. Ms. Marvel. So Ms. you got Captain Marvel. Marvel, and then you have Miss Marvel. Captain Marvel used to be Miss Marvel, but now we have our number three. Miss Marvel. Yes, uh, and that actually, that whole situation actually kind of plays into the new Miss Marvel's uh, character and like her journey, right. um, kind of like discovering her different powers. Because if you don't know, uh, the new Miss Marvel is Kamala Khan. She's yep. a um, Pak American uh, girl from uh, Pakistan, obviously, yeah. and uh, she gets. Um, powers from the Terrigen Mist. She um, has the ability to kind of change her body proportions. She can elongate her arms. She can make herself bigger. You know, she can do all this. Yeah. She's kind of... Super Mr. Fantastic, sort of. Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Not like really. More, very different. different power set from the first Captain Marvel. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then the thing that she struggles with at, uh, at the beginning of it is... Um, kind of her identity as this Miss Marvel right. um, separate from the old Miss Marvel. Yeah. Because given the power abilities that she has, she can make herself look like anybody. She yeah. can make herself look like Captain Marvel who's, you know, really tall, blonde, right. hot, yep. and everything like that. But she chooses to remain herself. looks like herself, you know, who's a Middle Eastern girl. Um, which, which is really important. She's yeah. written by G. Willow Wilson who is also Middle Eastern. The yeah. perfect writer so, for this kind of character. Well. Yes. Someone who really gets it. And then the artwork is by um, Chris Anka. The artwork in that is just mm -hmm. really, really yeah. good. It's kind it of a, it just, you look at it and you're just like, man, this is a Marvel comic. Yeah. Right. Just really in that Marvel tone of using bright colors and some and really it's, good. It's a goofier comic too. Yeah. It's, it's and so the art style yeah. tends to be a little more exaggerated sometimes and I think that fits well. I would say, I mean, it's for everybody, but it's very for like the person that's like coming up, getting into comics. I think. And they deal with so many different issues too. They deal with like kind of the attitude toward youth today, and like they deal with like um, different things, just like in general, like you know, our our attitude towards you know Middle Eastern people and like other you know people that you know, are kind of on the outskirts of society and everything like that. Um, it's really important. The, the writers are really plugged into what uh, the issues are yeah. today. Number one. Number one. Which is the Hawkeye series that started in 2012 but ended in 2015. Um, written by Matt Fraction. Matt Fraction. With artwork by David, I think it's just Aya? AJA? I think so. David Aya? Yeah. 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 Like, so the premise of that Hawkeye run was basically, what does Clint Barton do when he's not being an, an Avenger? Right. Um, and it's his everyday life, um, it's his relationship with his brother, it's his relationship with his neighbors, because he, he doesn't live like Tony Stark. In a yeah. No, mansion. he lives in Creddy Apartment. He's a, he lives in a regular yeah. dude as far as <laughs> Yeah, the, one of my favorite quotes, which I'm not even going to attempt to say because it's just him stammering over his words, it's just, he's just like, you know, you see something wrong and you don't think it's cool, so you you do something <laughs> about it and you don't think about anything except making it stop. And yeah. What I like about Clint is that, like, in every iteration that you see him in, he's not, like, this larger-than-life character like Tony Stark no. or, no. like, Cap or anything like that. He's just this normal guy who's just kind of, like, fed up with everything. Right. Kate Bishop as well, um, who, it, I mean, really the series is about both of them. It's not just yes. the Clint Barton yeah. story. 
Um, it's his relationship with his protege, yeah. Kate Bishop, as well, and her adventures. Um, and she, again, a really, that writer, Matt Fraction, is just so good at writing those two specific characters. But sometimes I just imagine him as like this little leash child who like gets into all this mischief and she's just like, <laughs> I gotta go take care of this. It's so and true. Seriously. Yeah. Um, and some of the cover artwork is just really it's so good. good. It's great. It kind of has like this old yeah. So that's our list, the top <laughs> ten things we read this year, five of which Alicia read, and the other five of which I read, we all read. He I read, read one he of He read a book. Yeah. I read no book. That's pretty good, right? Um, if you liked this, and you haven't seen our top ten things we watched video, you can go find that. Um, no, no, no. Click on this click orange on... hat. Okay, we'll click this on the orange represents... hat. There we go. Click on the orange hat. And to... then get linked to our top yes. 10 things we watched video. Yeah. Um, you can also check out our latest video, um, which is Aaron reviewing the Dark third Knight installment in the Dark Knight the series. Master Race. Yes, the you Master can click Race. on my head for that. And then you can click on Corey's head. What, what do I get on my Maybe head? to check out the podcast that me and Alicia do, which is Tuesdays at the Mystery Spot, if you're a big Supernatural fan, oh. uh, that would be a great podcast to check out. You can find links to our Facebook, our Twitter, our Tumblr, um, our SoundCloud, our WordPress and stuff, all in the description below. We yeah. will have links for all of that um, if you want to check us out. It's Please just easier for us to not say it. Yeah, it's you can exhausting. find it. Thank you very much. Happy holidays from Nerd Park, and stay nerdy.